Welcome, guys. This is another episode of Know Your Worth TV. I'm here with co-host Yair for the day. I uh, appreciate you going on and do this. If you haven't watched the last episode with Yair talking about the real estate business, how he became an entrepreneur, and just a little boy from Panama. So um, definitely go ahead and check out that last interview. But most importantly, we've got another realtor. All right. He says, uh, Yair, this is your mentor. That's my mentor, man. My brother. Hey. Mentor right here. Hey. All right. Another... <laughs> Another realtor in the game. We got Mr. Ken. How you doing, today, brother? Man, it's good. It's good. So I, I guess I guess it's only good that if if you like Yaya so far, that I'm proud to say yes. Uh, his former mentor always going to be in his life, but if he did anything wrong, I don't know this guy. Hey, man. <laughs> I, I, I agree, That's man. I agree. Right? <laughs> hey, man. Well, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let you do your thing, man. I'm here just getting to know Ken through Yaya's questions. I'll jump in. Um, when I want to get to know a little bit more, so there'll be some rapid questions on my end yes. um, as I see this quite, this conversation go. So, so hey, man. So, so first and foremost, thank you once again for having us in this uh, in this platform. You know, to be able to empower other entrepreneurs out there. Um, you know, I'm just gonna keep it short and simple, man. I just want you to to let the world know who is Ken Williams. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, that's a loaded one because. Um, you know, it came, It comes in different sizes. It comes in different phases of my life. But if I had to try my best to sum it up, um, you know, I even had to make a little couple of notes to keep it a little bit. Native New Yorker, um, proud son, brother, father, grandfather, husband, friend, mentor, entrepreneur, uh, server of the people, protector of the people, um, you know, more recently, more professionally, um, real estate expert advisor, also known as your local real estate hero. Uh, but if I had to kind of sum it up in one phrase, uh, just a humble man who cares, you know, somebody who uh, has gotten where he's gotten to, not because, uh, you know, anything that I planned out. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm the perfect ex uh, example of, uh, you know, you, you fail enough. You'll, you'll, you'll land on something decent, um, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. So, yeah, but if I had to just kind of say, you know, what do you, you know, summarize it up with is, you know, just somebody who cares and cares enough that he cares for more than just himself and he'll care for somebody else if, if the opportunity presents itself. That's Ken Williams. That's powerful, man. That's, yeah, that's, know, man. that's powerful, man. Listen, man. I'm going to introduce myself like that. Wow! <laughs> I'm you. This is going. I'm putting it out. This is going to be the realest show you guys ever take. Woo, boy, we are going I'm OG out here, here, man. I'm, I'm loving this. <laughs> hey, Ifra, anything you would like to add, man? I mean, any questions you have for Ken in, in regards to you? Ken, know? man, what what made you uh, think and take up you know real estate? I mean, what got you to this game? I'm pretty sure somebody had to lead you here or. A thought came across your mind that was like, hey, man, maybe I do, you know, want to see home. But what, what kind of led you to this point? Man, it's a very good question, um, because I think that for most people um, and, and I'll even kind of even stretch out a, a little bit more, especially people of color. Um, you know, unless you had a family member, I did not have a friend or family, which I did not have in the business, your your path of what it would take to earn a living, raise your family, you know, pay your bills. Um, those lanes, those avenues were pretty thin and yeah. um, I'm no different for me. It went from uh, first serving in the military, um, then serving as a police officer uh, in the Chicago area. And then, um, you know, doing other jobs, customer service wise and felt always a knack for that. Um, then became into, so Private security led me into um, multifamily real estate, property management, and um, to where eventually, you know, I've had um, people in my life at that particular time, um, but more especially a sister-in-law who said, you know, you're doing a lot for a company, um, man, you, you, you should get into real estate. And, I, you know, now I'm going to fast forward. This is like, you know, at the age of like, you know, 40-ish, you know, high 30s, 40s, and not really knowing anything about that um, and just kept going. And to be frank, quite frank with you, Frank, um, it took me to get fired from my last job to say, that's never happening again. <laughs> you know, I'll never let that shit happen again. 
And I'm like, okay, tell me more about this real estate stuff, you know? And then went from it. And uh, and like a lot of other people, you know, you're flipping the channels, home ownership, HGTV, you know, and, and then you start looking, you're like, I could do that. You know, I already do that. And, um, you know, then you get in and you start kind of going through that path. So I'd probably say just like a lot of people, you know, I wish I could see him say, oh, ever since I was yay, yay, I wanted to get into real estate. No, but I could say this much. And all of my careers, I've always wanted to help people. So I kind of say, you know, real estate just aligned and became another an, another avenue for me to continue to help people. So, yeah, so it wasn't like real estate was the thing that I thought I would end up doing. It just ended up being the next vehicle, the next tool that was provided to me by the universe to just continue to help people. Oof. I mean, that's Ooh. a lot, man. I'm going to go back. You said you've done military. Hey. Let's not go into too much details, man. We're going to have to be able to do a part two to this. I would say thank you for your service, uh, for sure, at, at least at that part. But yeah, man, it looks like you've been a busy person, really. That was um, through all those moments, right? You've went through so many different careers, so many different life paths. Um, was there struggles in between? Was there moments where you felt like you, you wanted to give up? I think that's important, man, because, you know, we, we do become successful people in, our, in, in so many different ways, but it's those struggles that people don't realize are in between. So let's be a little transparent. Was there any struggles you experienced? <laughs> when has there never been, brother? Um, that's the reason why when I was uh, told about this opportunity, it gave me chills when I knew the title, Know Your Worth. Um, again, I, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, you know, sound like a, a parrot or, or a parakeet, whichever one that always repeats things. Um, but I think that the message that I really want, uh, you know, for the audience to know is I wish I could see and act like, you know, this is something that is mapped out, planned out. Now, of course, we'll get to a point where it is needed, but, um, you know, it's, it's just really, man, I, I would, there's no saying you used to say, you know, even a broken clock is right twice a day. But really, what, to, to summarize my uh, struggles, I did not know my worth. I didn't know my place. I didn't know any of those things. Um, I'm one of uh, many children uh, in the middle. Uh, so growing up a middle child, uh, there would be 11 kids in the house in New York. And, um, you know, I remember, you know, I'm, I'm the product of the first, you know, it wasn't even at that time, it wasn't the first and 15th. It was the first of the month. And you just had to make all that food last long. And now everybody knew the combo to the safe that mom keep the, the extra snacks at and, and everything. So, no, I didn't have it easy at all. But I would probably say I was most hard, you know, as much as I could, you know, now in, in the state that I'm in now mentally. I first, if you would have asked me this question before uh, I did finally know my work, I would have blamed everybody else. I would have blamed you know, Absolutely. the lack of what I felt at the time my parents didn't provide. I could blame this person. I could blame that person for uh, firing me or this person for doing this and this person for doing that. You know, why hasn't life become easy? And um, I think what it was, was that, you know, the world wasn't going to give me my worth until I knew what my worth was. So, yeah, without a doubt, there was many, many bad days, many, many bad episodes of my life uh, that I brought to myself. And the reason being, if there's a part two to your question, is because I, I lacked worth to myself. I had no idea what I was worth. I knew um, I didn't I wasn't even crystal clear of really what I wanted. It was what I was doing. So I was always living my life based on what I was doing. So when I was in the military, I was a soldier. That's what my brand was. When I was a police officer, I was a police officer. You took that away from me. I didn't know where else I was at. I was then I just became another black man, a, a, a number. I still did not know what my worth was. So, yeah, a lot of my struggles led to the fact of uh, in search of myself. And again, especially for those who know me, that took me down some dark places in my life because, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm you know, definitely standing before you an imperfect human being. So, you know, so, yeah, definitely the struggles were there. And most of the struggles were because. Um, I was trying to find myself, um, you know, like a lot of people, and you don't know where to start, where to begin. And sometimes it's like the old rolling of the dice. And sometimes, nah, you wish you get those dice back, you know? So, yeah, plenty of times, plenty of times. I don't want to say much because I'm not sure what the uh, the law of uh, 
uh, ex, you know, uh, of, 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 you know, whether or not I don't want the white knocking on my door and say, yeah, we saw you on, uh, we saw you on the internet confessing to some things and stuff and you didn't know it, but we can still charge you for it. So you don't get that, you don't get any more from me, but yes, I did have some stumbles. <laughs> no, man, that's good. That's good stuff because I think it's important that, you know, when people see um, us at our highest, that they know that it wasn't just something that was provided to us. It wasn't something handed to us. It wasn't luck. It was, it was true. Just, um, failing, getting back up and doing all over again. You know, yes, like you said, finding yourself, understanding what your worth is. Very important detail that you mentioned through that, right? Mm. You weren't you weren't able to be provided your worth until you understood your worth. That was a line. I don't know if you know, but that was a whole line when you said that. I got it. <laughs> I don't know when you said it. I get down somebody, please, because yeah, yeah, I have to it's out. Thing, I got it already. <laughs> but um, so through those times, I always think it's very important to have good people around you. Did you find that you had good people that are willing to kind of guide you to that next level? Or, or how was that uh, time for you? Man, wow. All right. Here's why I, I got to control the emotions. You hit it right on the head. I thought the answer lied within me. I relied on me. I looked out just for me. Uh, any situation, it was always what do I get out of it? How much? How much can I get out of it? And how little can I put into it? Because um, I just thought it was about me. I thought yeah. that in order to get ahead, you had to be that way. You know, I, uh, we were joking before we started. I came up in that era where Wall Street and so on and so forth, like movies and things, you know, the Scarface era and everything where, you know, you saw something. It's, yeah, say hello to my little friend and let me kick in the door. Let me do whatever I got to do to get, you know, the old saying, you know, growing up. Let me do me, you know, and, and it's all about me. And, and, you know, it's what can I get from the next man? And then I started shifting that thought. And now what can I do with the next man? And then mm -hmm. God gave me some people around me, uh, man, that a friend that really, really. Uh, now, with that being said, this is no knock to the people that was in my path before. I didn't see their value. Again, yeah. the importance of knowing your value it opens your eyes to see the importance of other people's values. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I could really, really praise people like Yair, Carlos German, Miguel Diaz, my wife, things like that. Um, I could praise the people who are in my life now and make it seem like they are the ones that changed my life. No knock on them, but I can go back to my parents, my brothers, my sisters, friends that I grew up with, teachers. Um that around me that always said, you know, you're better than that. Stop hanging with this person or that person. I'm like, ah, oh, man, forget it. You know, whatever. I got five on that nickel bag. I'm going to finish smoking with that person. So, you know, it was things like that. So I think I've always been blessed to have good people in my life. And definitely, without a doubt, I wouldn't have gotten from any part of my life without them. But I would have to say it wasn't until, you know, you know, I, I'm almost embarrassed to say, you know, uh, I'll be turning 55 this year that it wasn't until probably the last 10 or so years, brother, that I really valued the people in my life. Mm. So, yeah, without a doubt, man, That's I good. would be, man, listen, I would be you just, what I in my life. You just let a lot of people know they still got time. What people don't realize is that they got time, right? Amen. That's it. Me That's that it. There's still time out there. You know what I mean? So Absolutely. definitely another gym. If you guys are listening to that, you got to pick this up. These are gyms he's dropping. You got to be it's just inspiration. Very I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying to give back. Hey, I'm trying to get to heaven, guys. Please. If <laughs> this helps somebody else, man, I want to be able to go up top and say, yeah, I know all the years that I did this. But remember, I helped a 15, 16, 20-something-year-old over, you know, a, a meeting that I had, an interview that I did, man. That got to count for something. Let me in. So, yes. Another good question, man, because I, I see this happen a lot, too. Um, and maybe you've had these moments where someone that you don't know um, just kind of gave you, you know, that small nugget that you still remember to this day. Maybe just had a brief conversation, met them at the bar, seen them at the grocery store, whatever it was. And they gave you that nugget. Is there something that you remember to this day that somebody may have told you? Man, so many, so many, so many. But yes, uh, without a doubt. They were just things that I look at now and I call them my angels. Um, the biggest one I'd probably say um, that really, really could have changed my life in a whole different perspective um, was um, a vice principal 
that, um, like I was alluding to, but you made me go deep into it, so I'll have to give a little bit more facts around the story. Good, good. That's what I like, yes. Uh, let's just say, I, you know, um, you know, I think in some states, you know, uh, consumption of cannabis is becoming legal. But at one point, uh, you know, I definitely, you know, <laughs> well, when it was not, uh, we're talking 80. So I, I think I'm, I'm good on this perspective. This, but I remember a teacher literally because who I was with, I was with about two or three other people at the time. And we got caught in the school bathroom and, you know, and, and consuming. And um, he pulled he pulled us in the whole time I'm walking. I'm saying to myself, I. I, I, it's, it's over <laughs> in my life. I go home. I tell them my parents I got kicked out. Um, this is back in the days where discipline was discipline. Mm. Uh, I won't share much of it because I don't want to get my father in trouble about the ways that we got disciplined <laughs> back in the days. Um, and I remember going in there. And, and so like, like you see in the movies, you all got to sit down at the bench inside the, the principal's office. And he pulled one person in, one person in. And I was last. I was the last one in. And long story short, when he pulled me in, the principal said, I'm not going to punish them the way I would want to punish them because you were in that group and I would have had to do the same to you. But because you're in this group, I let them go because I got to let you go because that's the old speech. I see something in you. You got talent. If you just put your talent to work, Go around the right people, surround yourself around the right people. You can make it in life. And I don't want this to hurt you. Oh. So this is back when I was like, what, 14, 15 years old. So I'd probably say that's something that we'll never forget because it's to this day. It's the same thing he just said would be the same advice I would give to somebody else. But at that time, even when he said that, I just said to myself, you walk out and you say, oh, I got, as you put it, you just chalk it up till I got lucky. no. That was a lesson learned. So I would probably say that's the first of many things that I heard that I would probably say helped change my life because that was more than just what I heard. That was also dodging what we call a bullet in the sense of, you know, something that somebody not only said, but done for me that has changed my life because that could have been a domino effect of a lot of different, that could have went a lot of different ways, you know, as we all know what it is not to be in school and to be out in the streets of New York and things like that. And we're, again, we're talking about the mid 80s um, and everything like that to where, you know, even you couldn't even make a career off of rap at that time. It was just something you did if you really had skills. But no, so I would probably say that's the one thing that stuck. I got many more and some more darker periods. But now I probably say that's the one that sticks out to me the most as far as to be able to share like that. That's just the one. And then the rest of it is just so many other times. Wow. Man, boy, listen, you, you ask them a question, you're going to get an answer. Like, oh, you're going to get an answer, guys. And, and, the reason, and I'll be honest with you, the reason why that is is because I cannot afford for this to be an opportunity, and mm -hmm. it gets lost in some kind of, you know, oh, and, and for 1095, or if you just, you know, say your prayers and eat your vitamins, and even you could be just like me. No, 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 no. You Real. could be just like you, and, yeah. and, and stay in this game long enough, you will definitely see your, your opportunity. Definitely. No, man. I um, I love it. I love it. What you got, Yair? Man, Ken, the real estate hero. Tell us more about that. Um, You know, I'm the real estate hero because I feel the real estate world needs a hero. Um, what that means is I think, you know, um, I obviously it's a play off of, you know, the, the other professions that have led to what it is that I've always done, which is always, you know, kind of like end up working as a server and a protector of my community. Um, but when it comes down to the real estate market, um, I saw an opportunity that wasn't, uh, that I didn't see consistently. Uh, I saw, you know, when I got into the business, eventually it was really about the numbers. I got in right at the crash. So kind of like the, the, the residue of the crash was happening. Almost every other property was a foreclosure. Uh, so I saw a lot of people, benefiting off of the downfall of someone else. Okay. So um, I, that was the first thing that I saw, I, you know, and then, you know, it's like everybody, Oh man, another foreclosure has happened. And, you know, and now we get to sell and I get to do this and I get to do that. And I've just always been that person to say, but man, do you realize that means somebody lost their house? You know, there's somebody who is not too happy that there's a foreclosure out there and so on. Yeah. And so I just that really just always intrigued me. I just always felt like um, 
the business was um, a lot about numbers. Uh, you know, everybody saw that the companies that I joined at that time, the people that was around, everybody asked the same question. So, you know, how many homes did you sell? How many, it was always about a number. It was always about a number. I never heard somebody ever say, yo, how many people did you help? You know, oh. how did that feel to help a person and so on and so forth? And I just always felt there was something, you know, not right about that. Um, you know, because, you know, I, I, by this time I was also in that category, you know, I have felt, I have filed bankruptcy before this time period, you know? So I've had my, as you put it before, I've had my shares of dark times. So I, I am a learner and a student to know good people go through bad things. So I just always said that, um, and then last but not least, when I first got into the business, since it was about the numbers, it was also a cutthroat business. It was all, it was more mine, mine, mine. Nobody, you know, everybody would pat me on the head. I didn't always just dress this casual. It was the suit and tie and what you would expect a, a salesperson to look like in a sense. And I used to get the pat on the head and, oh, yeah, you're going to do good in this business. I'm like, yeah, but then you're going you, you gonna to help me, <laughs> you know, and I didn't get any of that. And I just said to myself, when the opportunity comes, I'm gonna just going to be a hero to everybody I touch, everybody I come across. And I'm not going to be the hero where I sit on some mountaintop. I'm going to be that down to earth hero to somebody. And I just from that point made it a pledge to make sure that whoever I come in contact from that moment forward, I always left them in a better position than I found them. And of course, that's where the whole hero thing really kind of formed and, and you know, kind of fruition itself into the person you see and what it means to me today. Hey, hey, can I just say I'm a product of that? Can I yes. just say I'm a product of that? Thank Man. you, my brother. Thank Anytime. you. Anytime. Anytime, anytime, anytime. I mean, my, my question, man, the whole time I'm, I'm listening, you you have just like two sides, right? There's that side of you um, understanding that there was there were struggles, that there was bad times, that there wasn't the best stew involved. But there's still this giving factor that you have, right? Yeah. This I'm wanting to help. I mean, you went to go serve in the military. You served as an officer. You're serving as the real estate hero. Where, where does that giving come from, man? DNA, brother. I'm glad you took time to, to, to bring me back to that. Um, first of all, everyone's got a dark side. I don't care who you talk to. You just ain't found out what it is or they just ain't told you. So I'm going to call you out. Everyone's got Absolutely. one. But Absolutely. you are correct. Um, I also feel everyone's got a light side. You may not see it as much. You know, I've, I've talked to, I've interviewed a lot of people myself, both as, a, you know, in all my careers and, and everything. And the common question usually is, oh, if you had to change something, you know, people always say, oh, I wish I was, wasn't so nice. I'm like, why is that? Because people took advantage of me. Um, so, no, it goes way back to, again, like I said, growing up with so many brothers and sisters, the caring started at home. And that's why I said is that even when I didn't, was too young and dumb to appreciate it, when I look back now, um, you know, it was the old watch your brother, watch your sister, uh, share with your brother, share with your sister, because um, there wasn't no mind. <laughs> there was no such thing as that. Uh, any, even when you did get something, it was shared. Clothes were shared. So it was just everything was just sharing. So I would definitely try to sum it up by just saying it was at home first. Then it just went trickle from there. I think about every childhood friend of mine. Um, you know how it goes. You yeah. are a crowded house. Your friend has, it's just me. It's usually him and one sister or brother. So that's the house you stay at. Those people fed me and let me be there and spend the night and stuff like that. So they were givers. And I, you know, never had the opportunity to thank a lot of them and stuff. So yeah, it just started from in the house. And I must say at this point, man, I've had angels around me so many times and all throughout my life. I just only hear somewhat ashamed that I didn't get a chance to thank them. And, um, you know, and, and, and take advantage of that opportunity at that time to do something better with my life. And that's the reason why it's, it's all or nothing with this uh, help, help, help attitude, because I'm just hoping that, you know, whether they see it on social media or something like that, that I want every person who forgave me, supported me, just like what you said, said two seconds to me when you didn't even know me. I just want to hopefully that you see something like this and say, yeah. That's why I did it, because I knew he was going to come to this stage, even when he didn't know it for himself. So this is good, man. This is good. But I, I do want to get on the wives, because me and Yair spoke about the wives at one point. I don't know if it was we were at <laughs> But we're going to talk the wives just in case they're watching. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, 
how how beneficial was it to have such a partner in your life, right? Because you, you mm. kind of mentioned earlier that she was also a big asset to who you are today. So kind of go back about what is it that she's been for you? Because me, you know, I always give credit to my wife. I'm not the man I am without my wife. You know Ooh. what I mean? And Yair can say the same thing, but you want to hear Mr. Kim Williams. What was that? that no, was definitely. That? First of all, no, I, I don't have the privilege of, of, of knowing your wife to, could, could, uh, to, to put my stamp of approval, but no, definitely. I, I know that man's wife. And yes, I could vouch and say, yes, I, I know what she means to him and, and even the elements of what she brings to the table. Man, definitely. I don't think there's enough time to give her just due. So I will try to sum it up in a lot of different ways. Um, you talk about, yeah, you know, you talk about like, you know, <laughs> loving, still loving you for even when your your true self is exposed and known and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, she's been the, the, the biggest foot in my ass, the biggest whatever, but also my biggest cheerleader. Um, yes. You talk about a forgiver, man, man, oh man, I would have left me. You know what? I don't see, see, I don't say that because I don't want to plant no seed in her head. <laughs> but I definitely have, uh, I definitely go to bed, you know, and wake up every day grateful. And always going to bed knowing I did not even probably give her enough of it. I, and I, you know, and again, this is one of those things where to this day, uh, I don't think that I could ever probably say enough uh, to let her know how much it is. But you know, again, since you know we're we're on that path of keeping it real, man, I'll tell you right now, you know, uh, easily, easily, she could have bailed out on this thing and said, "Yeah, this is crazy." <laughs> you know, it's kind of like you know, I'm trading this lemon in, you know, a long time ago. So. Just the fact of what she shares with me and what she means to me, if I had to sum her up, uh, one of the strongest people I know uh, for nothing else, A, for tolerating me and, and the bullshit that I put her through. But also, I would probably say that that's the truest strength of a person. Because, you know, to me, anybody could act strong when they're in a strong position. But to me, your strength really comes when you're what some would say in your weakest position. And I think that's the reason why for me, she's always going to be the strongest person I know. Because, again, she had every justifiable reason to not still stick with me through this. So uh, she represents commitment. She represents loyalty. She represents dedication. She represents inspiration. Um, you know, she proofread all my beginning works and all that kind of stuff. Now I try not to get her into it because she still corrects me and probably a little bit too much now. So, you know, I try to just, you know. Uh, not leave too much stuff sitting around her now because I, I like, you know, I think I got it now. I think I can do this <laughs> stuff now. So, uh, but no, yeah, she, she, she's the person that, um, that really represents to me all the things that, um, that I needed in order to keep me grounded. She, we're the yin and the yang. Now, if I go into a, to a place, I'm the loud one in the room. She sits back real low and just watches everybody else. And, you know, then on the car ride back, she could, you know, boom, 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 tell me what her opinion is about this person, that person, this person, that person. And for yeah. the record, of the air, from the moment she met you, she knew you was a good brother. Thanks. So, uh, man. <laughs> man, they got like secret powers. My wife is the same person. She walked oh into my a gosh. Room. She Don't get me started. Like, Don't get me started. Yes. She's stomping out the place. Yeah, God. Yes. Yeah. That, <laughs> that radar is up. That radar is well, up. <laughs> nah, man, um, it's good stuff. And I say that because as a man, it's so important that we're in good relationships and not just friendships with friends, but at home, because I always, you know, tell my wife this and, and I mean it. And I anybody else that I may speak to when it comes to relationships is that at the end of the day, in order to be happy in a relationship, you got to be happy with yourself. But in order to be happy with yourself, you got to have you've got to surround yourself with good people. So when you come home, having that somebody that is actually pushing you and not bring you down. Um, so, you know, shout out to the woman. So that's why I asked that question, you know, what was she to you? And and of course, it's usually that, you know, they pushing us to become the men that we are. Everything. You know? Yeah, so, the word is everything. The word is yeah, everything. Yeah. That's my best I, friend. I almost felt like I said it because I was in the doghouse. I'm not in the doghouse or anything. I just wanted to say, my wife's probably the next one listening like, yo, Woo, you said it's a good celebrate, thing. Celebrate, celebrate. I too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so sir. Funny. It's okay. No, that's good, man. That's good. I, I um, I'm loving the story, you know, and I see so much of what this channel stands for in you, right? Um, yeah. being able to educate others, empower others, 
Um, and I'm just that given person. So to know kind of what you're doing, and I know you're going to bring anybody here less than, but um, <laughs> it's been amazing, man. It's just been amazing to kind of see where, why you got here, how you got here, um, and never giving up. That's the most important part is, is that never giving up part. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely. What, what, Definitely. what up, y'all? What, what else we can need to get from Mr. So, Kevin? So, you know Ken, 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 Ken. So how can we empower others to chase their dreams no matter yeah. – their past past circumstances, you know, because we all yeah. had, like you said, we all had that beginning struggle, middle struggle, and we still struggle to certain things. And we had this conversation about doubting. So how can we empower others to overcome that doubt that come across when they're trying to stay focused on their visions? Man, um, rule number one, care. There's an old saying that I've heard Nobody cares what you know until they know you care. Um, so the first thing is, you know, go to everyone um, as Christ would in the sense of from a humbleness. Uh, you know, go to them when necessary. Hear them when necessary. Um, you know, I'm just a strong believer of, you know, when you're in a leadership role, you could sit here and, and tell them what to do and all this other kind of stuff. And, yeah, you know, man, I'm just a believer of just, man, you ask the right questions. And the answer will reveal itself. So what you do, uh, and I like the way you you, you said it. it. First of all, you have to take it as a duty, not as a job, not as anything other than like you have to make a pledge. For me, I jokingly tell people when they, you know, appreciate what I do for them. And I say, you know, and I kind of do a little humorous way. I'm like, I'll be honest with you. I'm just trying to, you know, I'm not trying to mess up my deal with, 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 with the, you know, with my savior, because in my darkest hours, I just said, uh, if you ever, if you ever do this for me, I will carry the torch for you. And so I always jokingly say, I'm just trying to make sure I own up to my end of the bargain because he did bring me out. He did put me in a position and achieve a lot of things that I never thought that I can do legally. And so um, I would probably say, you know, you have to take it first as a duty, but then after that, you do it from the heart. Um, I don't look at somebody and judge them. Um, I listen to them, you know, and then help. So my philosophy is always, what can I do to help you? And then what happens is you give a person that opportunity, brother, I'll tell you right now, they do it for themselves. Now you only have to do is support them. You have to, and then of course, you know, as you already know, I would probably say one of the biggest things that usually gets missed out of the equation is accountability. Sometimes we need that. We need to be able to, you know, it's like they were saying, it's like, uh, I think I t didn't we agree you were supposed to come home at 10. And it's, you know, like we, and every generation's had that. For my generation, it was the porch light is on. Why are you just getting in the house? And that, and, and that is what stays hold true uh, to this day is the fact that we know somebody else is counting on us. So I think that if you took somebody, appreciate them for themselves, let them know it's okay. Be non-judgmental. Truly listen to them. Ask them where do they want to go, how do they see themselves getting there, and what do they need, and how can you play a part? Then you just put yourself in there, and then, like I said, from time to time, check on them, and that's where the accountability comes in. And then you just check it on them, checking on them, checking on them, checking on them. Again, I, I really do believe people could have it in themselves. I, like I said, I've always had it. I just wasn't around. I didn't know my value to where I started putting the value to it. And I think that's how I would cap it off. You know, obviously, you know, value slash worth is that once you allow a person to know that they are worth something, I, it's like the old saying, you know, I think it's the old saying, no one planned to fail. They just failed to plan. So I just think that what goes on in, in, in the world, which is always, and if you ever notice, uh, riches really is about positioning. Which is work. Ken, Ken, real quick, man. You're so old school. The things that you say, man, you know what comes with wisdom. I'm just yeah, saying, I know, a lot of people watch some of the old school stuff I'm saying. You, you, you better be like, I didn't say you jive turkey, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do that, but no, but no, nah, I mean, I mean, you know, again, your friend, it's, it's such a, you know, like I'm humbled to be in your presence, you know, for somebody to have the vision to know that really it does really does just come down to work. So I think, you know, to if I could try my best to more or less sum it up, I think it's just, it's the name of this program. I think that what you just mm. need, what our duty is, is show each other their worth. Because if you ever think about in history, 
you know, you know, like, you know, we all, you know, we, we all know everything from racism to all this other kind of stuff. It's really about positioning of worth, you know, slash wealth or whatever the case might be, because it's about positioning. It's really people think it's about money. No, it's not about money. It's about value. You know, it's about your worth and how do you see yourself? So I think that the biggest thing that anybody could ever do is, a, is, is, is help the next person see their worth. And I think that if you do that, man, job has been done. Job has been done. So I feel like I'm going to take this transition here, right? Because I also want to make sure I plug you in and, and, and plug you in in the right way. So obviously you're a realtor, right? We want to make sure that people understand and know their worth. So for those that may be in the process of wanting to buy a home but feel that they, they don't have it or, um, you know, they can never do it. What is what when you say you've been in the game for a long time, you've seen the foreclosure, so you've seen people at the lowest, you've probably seen people at the highest and buying the million dollar homes. So yep. what can you tell those individuals that may want to one day buy a home, but one may be afraid of what that process looked like, or maybe they just feel they will never have the funds. Um, if you could just kind of you know talk about those things. Sure. sure, sure. No, definitely how all this ties in and how we could align it to real estate. Once a customer or another agent um, you know, uh, is on that quest to purchase, to sell, to join, to service and stuff. Um, what I would recommend and, and, you know, what they could expect from me is alignment at that point. So let's discover and then we align and then we just check in, which is the process through transparency, timely communication, hard work, service, uh, until the, the, uh, until the goal is achieved and there's no failure. There's no failure. Um, I always say when it comes down to real estate, as long as I got a buyer who wants to buy and a seller who wants to sell, my job, my duty is to ensure that gets done. So for me personally and for so many great people that I'm proud to call partners, um, we all go off of that same mantra is that if I got to, you know, the old quote, quote, if I got to do the next man's job, then you know what? I, I got to do it. Uh, I can't I can't let the worth drop at any point so uh is to be a pillar of that and to be a soldier of that and just making sure that the mission gets accomplished so that's that's what it is it's, a, it's about missions being accomplished. i think a lot of people don't realize it's a natural human instinct uh you know the whole scientific part of more you know the amorphous that you know that we generate through our body is thrilled off of success if you ever think about the things that you know when you get most excited is because you're achieving something and I think that if you do that, man, if the world, can you imagine if the world was full of just people achieving things every day, uh, man, we wouldn't have war. I mean, how can you, how can you be mad at somebody enough to go to war with them when you got a fair share? It can't happen. It can't happen. Wars happen. Disparities happen. People doing people wrong is because somebody feels that somebody has something more or they're not getting enough share. So what if we just even it out and balanced it? So what, that's what they could expect. So if you're if you're searching to buy a home, then let's make sure that we can do it in the most efficient way where I can save you time and save you money. If you're looking to sell your home, what if I work so hard that I can get you the most money within the amount of time frame that you want it to be? What if you wanted to transition into real estate or just anything that you want to be successful in life and we were able to sit down and come up with a proven repeatable system to get you where you need to be? How would that you know, how would that make you feel? And if the person is all of the affirmative and positive, man, then let's get going. When do we start after that? And as always, you know, let's go ahead and make it fun. As I'm looking around, because I'm all yeah. back oh, making real yeah. estate fun again. Yeah. 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 Let's make it fun again. All right. So, where would they find you, man? Where would they find you if they need this information and they want to take it? Man, I always, I always say, sure to put in the, you know, a help signal in the air, you know, like Batman. <laughs> No, um, you, you can find me, you know, uh, direct. My phone number is 407-726-0719. Um, you know, proud member of Carlos German and team, EXP Realty, uh, you know, Global Alliance, um, Supreme Group. Um, but uh, you could also reach me at www.kenwilliams.work. Boom. Boom. That's what I'm here to do. Yeah. Really good better, man. He said Ken Williams yeah. 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 I won't come alone. I won't come alone. I have a I have a team of awesome agents that will help me make sure that your real estate needs get done. I love it though, man. Ken Williams dot work. All right now. So yeah, you want to ask him that last question, man? 
Oh man, a million dollar to question. Honest, to, to be honest with you, man, <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you the honors. <laughs> I get, I, I'm just like lost for words right now, man. Like, <laughs> All right, man, the question. Obviously, you know, you're on your work TV. So the question that I have to ask is, when was that time in your life where you realized that I know my worth, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life, and no one's going to, to tell me any different? You know what? That's, that's definitely um, an awesome question, and I'm not sure if, if uh, the world is ready for my answer. It came at my lowest point because I said to myself, it can't get no worse. <laughs> it can only go up. So it wasn't until I, you know, like I told you before, I was uh, before this, I was uh, let go, you know, whatever you want to call it. That's what they said. We have to let you go. Uh, it was fired. <laughs> um, and to go to work. OK, so this is let me hit, paint the mentality that you have at, when that happened. So I got up that day. OK, and, and again, and I'll be honest with you. Now that I think about it, they did let me go for the right reason, because this is what goes on in the traditional mindset of the average day worker. You're getting up, not grateful that you have a job to go to. Hello. So the first thing you do, you get up and you're like, uh, it's like, the, you know, oh, shit, here we go. Whatever, whatever is in stuff like the world owes you something. Right. So, you know, so it was like I go to I go in that day, you know, always just thinking about. I got to, you know, like the, for the negative reason, I got to go and I got to do this. I got to, and it was like, I got to, I got to, got to, got to, got to, right? And instead of saying, I get to, I get to, okay? So I'm not here, you know, so that, just like you said, and keeping it real, this is not about people quitting their jobs and being an entrepreneur and getting into real estate. No, I, I want to make sure that somebody knows their work even when they do work for someone else. So I, not everybody's in the position to quit their job, get into real estate and be an entrepreneur and, you know, and all that kind of good stuff. I don't want to mislead your audience. So just a switch of that. But since I did not do that, you want to talk about a slap of reality where you thought you had a whole day of they need me and look at all the shit I got to handle for them. They don't pay me enough. Yada, yada, yada. And then for them about a little, because for some reason they always hit you. You know, midday to end of day <laughs> for those who for those who've never been in that, you know, rough position. So for me, it was right around lunchtime and they come in and um, they had to fly in the HR person. And um, man, you want to talk about starting your day with a whole lot of things you thought you were going to have to deal with and instead of appreciating the fact that you had a job and you're putting your shit in the box <laughs> and you drive. You try to keep your manhood intact and everything and, you know, and then you got to put your stuff in the car and then go home like we talked about to that significant other, to that wife and say, I woke up with a job. I don't have one. Mm. At some point, you're going to have to stop pointing the finger. And at some point, you're going to have to say it's time to man up, woman up, adult up, whatever up you need to do and say, OK. I'll never let this happen again. I'll never. So I would probably end the word to your audience. Know your worth. Be grateful. You know, so there's no saying I'm forever grateful, just never comfortable. <laughs> That's why I keep moving. <laughs> Real quick. One thing I took out of that. First of all, I knew where you were going with the whole story. Right. We've all kind of been there at this point. Yes, as entrepreneurs. We, we all had to take that uh, that leap. But what I did take out of it was changing the mindset. Right. You, you change your mindset when something happened. And, and another thing I took out of it is sometimes that one door will close for another door can open. Yes, and sir. we want something, but since we don't act on it, it happens in different ways. And, you know, I'm a believer. So I believe that, you know, a lot of times God will take you out of a situation because it ain't just, it's just not for you. And since you're not moving, he's going to move you. So, um, I mean, just kind of base. I want to break that down and how I took it. You know what I mean? No, okay. and, 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 it's, and it's funny you said it because I had a saying that he'll get you on your knees one way or the other. <laughs> oh, so yeah. I'd rather get on my knees and pray for gratefulness and stuff than to get on my knees and like, oh, woe is me. So he's going to get you on your knees one way or the, he or she, I should say, will get you on your knees one way or the other to get your attention 
to give you what you really need. So sometimes we get a little, I call it, we get a little cute. We get a little bit, you know, I'm the vice president. I'm the manager. Look at me, look at me, look at all my responsibilities. But if you don't look at yourself in a certain way, yes, he will, he will take out all that extra noise. He's like, oh, maybe you're not listening to me because I've given you too much. <laughs> so he'll start taking it away. I'm like, oh, okay. Were well, you talking to me? <laughs> I'm listening now. So yeah. So I, what changed it for me is when I started listening and started appreciating. So I think for me, is the word when the word gratefulness came into my life, and then after that, after gratefulness came duty, goals, desire, achievement, inspiration, and it just opened it up. And there's no saying that I will also say to everybody who's in darkness. I've never seen a time where darkness and light can occupy the same space. Guys, we got to make a decision. We need to make a decision. What side are you on? Where do you want to be? Don't be the world's greatest uh, victim. The world still needs more heroes. Oof. Man, you couldn't have a better ending right there. That was hey, a good ending. That's a second mic drop. Second mic drop. Listen, Ken, it's definitely been a pleasure, man. Like you said, this could definitely be a part two. One was an hour in, and I don't want to take up too much of your time. Honestly, just honored to have this conversation. So thank you to Yair for, um, you know, bringing you on here. Thank you, Yair, for co-hosting with me today, and hopefully we get to do more of this. So maybe maybe you're doing, your, you know, your own thing here on the I channel. I see. <laughs> thank you. No, thank you. Thank I, I, you. Want to thank, I want to thank you, too, man. I want to thank you for... You know, this is this is my brother. I'm, you know, this is my brother. And when he came to me and he said what you know you're doing and stuff like that, you know, I was a little man. Let, let me check him out. I'll, I'll, I ain't gonna love him just yet. But now, bro, I, I can I can let you know, man. You you, you definitely got a fan in me, and appreciate I appreciate it. What you're, I appreciate what you're doing. So just like when you started out thanking me for my services and stuff like that, I want to thank you for your service. Definitely. Thank you, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, we definitely gotta we gotta do something in person at this point now. This is good yeah. energy. I need the energy in person. Like, yes. Yeah. Tell him where we're gonna be at tomorrow. Tell him where we're gonna be at. Let him know. He can come hey. tomorrow. Hey, we're gonna be there. We're gonna be there. <laughs> right, well, guys, this has been Mr. Know Your Worth TV. It's been a pleasure to be here with both of these. Um, there's some videos that you guys can watch on either end. So go ahead and click the video. Click the like button. Click the like button. There's some videos that you guys can watch on either end. So go ahead and click the videos and stay tuned. Subscribe and make sure that you like this video, man. This was gems. This was good stuff right here. This is the only way that we can continue to grow. So until next time, Know Your Worth TV. See you. Woo, thank you, Frayne. Wow, man. Yeah.